Bem-vindas todas e todos. Welcome everyone. This video was recorded in English and it will have subtitles in Portuguese. Esse vídeo, gente, foi gravado em inglês, mas ele tem legendas em português que podem ser ativadas nas configurações do vídeo. Então, assim, a gente se entende melhor, tá bem? Deem uma olhadinha aí nas configurações para que todos vocês possam ativar a legenda se desejarem. So, I am Gabriela Tebet, professor at Unicamp, Faculty of Education, and it's a pleasure to have Hi Safael here with us today. Hello, everybody. So I'm Heisa, nice to meet you all. It's a pleasure for me to be here too. Nice. Thank Heisa. you, Gabriela. Heisa is assistant collaborating researcher in the graduate program in education at the University of Brasilia and will interview with me the professor Marianne Udheim, who is associate professor at the Department of Early Childhood Education of Faculty of Arts and Education in University of Stavanger, Norway. Hi, Marianne. Hi, happy to be here. Thanks for asking me. Mm. It's a pleasure for us to have you here today and to have our dear audience with us once again. Well, so I will invite Raisa to start the new topic, should it be? Yes, yeah, so please, Marianne, that's, that's the best part of it. I want to hear about your research. It's, it's kind of so, so important for us nowadays. We so much need to learn more about technology more about how teachers can deal with that and children. We're so lost in it. So please. Thank you. So then I'll, in this last part, I will focus on uh, my uh, PhD study and I'll focus on one of the articles I've written. Um, and it is an article based PhD. So it uh, consists of three articles. So this is uh, this one is about young children and teachers creating digital stories in um, early childhood. So the article "Teachers' Pedagogical Strategies When Creating Digital Stories with Young Children" is written with together with uh, Margaret Yarnes, and it's published as open access. But what is a digital story? A digital story is a story expressed through different modalities like pictures, sound and words and presented digitally. And in one of the cases, six young children, four to five year olds and their teacher made a stop motion animation movie with Duplo and clay figures. Uh, text, a narrator and music. And this movie is called Rapunzel and it has clear references to the story about Rapunzel who's trapped in a castle by her stepmother and rescued by a prince. But the children have also included several other creatures, a troll, a monster, a lion and a leopard who all fell on a rock in the, the woods. Many researcher, researchers and practitioners in early childhood tend to look at traditional and digital resources as two different aspects, such as digital books versus paper books, instead of seeing them as complementary resources. And in my study, both digital and non-digital activities and resources were important in the creation process. Digital technology has provided new possibilities for the children to create in uh, kindergarten. And some of these new opportunities within the context of creating digital stories are to modify product, during the making, to add sound, to create movement, to watch again and again, and to share with pairs. Children's and teachers' creative exploration and inventive use of digital technology is highlighted in the Norwegian Framework Plan for Kindergartens. The pedagogical and creative aspects of using digital technology with the children are emphasized. Digital practices in kindergarten shall encourage the children to play, be creative and learn. And stories have a long tradition in Norwegian kindergartens, but the children shall also be, be encouraged to be active and create their own cultural expressions. And I look at the process of creating digital stories with children 
as valuable opportunities for children to gain first-hand experiences with creative and inventive use of technology and digital literacy. There has been an increasing number of empirical studies of young children and digital technology during the last decade. Still, several researchers call for more research of young children's creation with digital technology and children's digital stories. Further, during my search for previous research, I mostly found studies in which children in early childhood education and care create stor digital stories individually or in pairs. Groups of children making digital stories together are less common. Further, few of the studies focus on the entire process of creating digital stories. Most studies that I found focus on only parts of the process, mostly the digital activities. My study is a qualitative multiple case study with two cases where I focus on observable contemporary events in situ to provide an in-depth exploration of what is happening when groups of young children and a teacher together create digital stories. A technology-mediated story creation process can be understood as a creative process in which a group of children create something together by using digital technology as a tool or a medium. And they have participated in the whole process from the first inspiration to the finished pro uh, product. And in this case, an, an created an animated story. And I emphasize digital technology as a tool to create by which the children and the teachers are the creators or producers of products uh, to be shared with others. And both cases in my study started with a shared reading activity with a picture book app to inspire the children to create their own story and ended with a display of the final products. And then the children were sharing what they had made. And in between, there were many different activities such as creating the narrative, creating props, animating, recording sound, editing, and watching the movie. And the teachers were responsible for these different activities, while I participated as an observer, took notes, and video recorded activities. The study was approved by the Norwegian Center for Research Data, and all participants, the teachers, the parents, and the children have provided their informed consent. This article's research question is, what pedagogical strategies are in use by two kindergarten teachers when they create technology-mediated stories with groups of children? With a focus on collaborative creation processes, we look at social cultural perspectives as a valuable theoretical framework. This includes guided interaction, sustained shared thinking, and spacious and interactional patterns, spacious and narrow interactional patterns. And the research question indicate an open approach to the empirical material with a focus on the teacher's pedagogical strategies of how to involve the children in the process. The analysis was performed inductively across the two cases inspired by grounded theory by constant comparison analysis. I started by exploring the empirical material, what is happening, and then I added theory. And the three most frequently used strategies by the teachers were inviting to dialogue, explaining the practical, and instructing for the results. And I come back to these three. And the anal analysis shows that the teachers invited the children to engage in a rich dialogue during all activities, both the non-digital activities and the digital activities. And we experience the teachers as open-minded and child-centered, encouraging the children to participate actively and giving them time and space to contribute verbally and non-verbally. So in the Rapunzel case, where they created their animated story, the children created the narrative before they started to animate. 
but there were still many choices to make during the process. The teacher encouraged the children to animate the narrative they were, the way they wanted. And during the animation activity, the teacher sometimes invited the children to dialogue by encouraging them to make a choice about where to move the characters. Where are they going now? The teacher asked. I'm going in that direction, the child replied and moved the lion a step towards himself. Very often the children responded verbally and non-verbally to the teacher's questions, as this uh, example show. And here we have an example of sustained shared thinking in practice. The teachers expressed that they were interested in, in the children's ideas and respected the children's opinions. And we interpret this as spacious interactional pattern. All participants were active in the interactions and the discussions during the creation process. And the teachers clearly expressed that they did not have the answers, but they needed help from the children during the creation process. And during the process, some ex unexpected things happened. For example, when one of the children clicked on something on the tablet and started the movie during animation. And both the children and the teacher started laughing. And the teacher asked in a wondering tone, what have you clicked on now? Other times during animation, the teacher invited the children into a dialogue by making a wondering comment. I wonder what happens now. And the teachers deliberately invited the children to dialogue in non-digital and digital activities. And these findings might have been identified because the digital activities were part of a collaborative process in which the participants created a product together. During the activity animation, one of the most frequent strategies used were explaining. Explaining was also a common strategy in the digital activities, sound and product, but less common in the non-digital activities, creating props and creating narrative. And during the animation activity, the teacher often invited the children to dialogue about the activity by explaining what was happening. Sometimes she highlighted specific things as an invitation for the children to find a solution themselves. Other times the ne children needed help to see whether the characters were actually move, uh, showing in the picture or not. Uh, or needed a reminder that one of the children was still visible in the picture. As you can see in this uh, illustration, the teacher sat next to the child taking the photos, looking at the tablet during the process. And the children moving the characters were not able to see what was visible in the picture unless they moved towards the tablet. So sometimes the teacher helped the children by explaining how far they could move the characters and the child standing by the tablet takes the picture. Then you can move the monster a little, not much, just a little, the teacher says. And the child laying on the floor and moves the, the monster a little. And then the child walks towards the tablet to see how it looks and the other child takes the picture. Great, the teacher says. And we interpret this as scaffolding the children in the activities. And our our overall impression is that the teachers were active and proximal teachers also when explaining the practical. The teachers involved the children in the process by first explaining and showing and then letting them do it themselves. So with Dewey's concept of interpretation and guidance, we interpret the teachers to be able to observe the situation and the children and act in a response to them. They were able to regulate when uh, explanation was needed. What is interesting is that there seems to be a larger focus on learning when the teacher used explaining as a strategy to involve the children, as opposed to when they used inviting. The teachers had a broader view of the creation process. They knew where, where they were going, kind of, um, and took the role as the person in charge but more in some activities than in others. And the activity had a clearly defined goal and that was to create a digital story. Uh, instructing for result. 
was also a frequent strategy during the activity animation, but was hardly used in the other activities. And when the teachers explained something to the children, they told them what to do and why. But sometimes they also instructed the children by telling them what to do without any explanation. This was mostly done after the teachers had already explained to the children what to do and why. And typical ways of giving instructions were, oh there, oh wait, we have to wait. Then you stop, you picture, and no, you, you must move out of the picture. And the children did as the teacher told them, and the children seemed to accept their instructions. The children seemed to recognize the teacher's communication in situ as meaningful and relevant. So giving instructions is also part of scaffolding. The teachers took responsibility and control of the situation. And instructing is a central part of proximal guided interaction and can be described as a narrow interactional pattern and thus as a necessary part of the process. So to summarize, the three most frequently used pedagogical strategies are inviting to dialogue, explaining the practical and instructing for results. So the take home message is, this study has focused on how the teachers involve the children during the creation process. The findings show that the creation of digital stories is a complex process in which the teachers use several pedagogical strategies to involve the children. And these are equally important for the process and the product. An encouraging tone characterized the situations when the teachers invited the children to dialogue, explained the practical and instructed for results. And a combination of spacious and in narrow interactional patterns during the making seems to be necessary to finalize the product to, be, to create a digital story. In contrast to findings from other studies, we found mostly proximal guided interaction in this study. The teachers worked mostly directly with the children, and this can be seen in relation to the children. teachers focus on children's participation, which is regulated in the Norwegian Kindergarten Act. In response to the call for more, more focus on the youngest children's creation with digital technology, the study complements other studies in the field by emphasizing the collaborative creative process. The research findings contribute to knowledge of how teachers involve the children in a digital creation process. Here are my references. And at this QR code, you'll find a link to the articles and my PhD. Thank you. Thank you, Mariani. Thank you very, very much. And first of all, I want to congratulate you for the research so interesting that you developed. And uh, I want to tell our audience, I will put here in the video descriptions these references you, you quoted. So for those who want to know more about your project, just go in the description. Uh, so, uh, well, Marianne, it's amazing the way you bring children to another place in curriculum, not just listening stories, but also producing it. So it's really amazing and necessary, I think, new ways of seeing children in our pedagogical practice, not just as passive, but as social actors. So congratulations again for your work. And Thank I will you. start bringing a question done by Bruna Santos, our student. She read the paper, We Need Sound 2, Children and Teachers Creating Multimodal Digital Stories Together. And through the test, you talk about the professional digital competence of teachers. You say, uh, they expressed a lack of knowledge on how to include digital technology in their pedagogical practice. 
and then you inform that you develop it and offer a workshop for teachers with a focus on how to create digital story. So Bruna asks, if do you think just a workshop is sufficient for the teachers to include in his pedagogical, his and her pedagogical practices, the use of technology with children? And if you believe that teachers in undergraduate should also have this type of training? Um, a workshop is not enough, but a, a workshop helps. So. <laughs> Um, these teachers, um, some of them uh, had used some technology, but some of them had not. Um, most people today, at least in Norway, are we use technology all the time. But then it's not that common to use the technology in the kindergartens. Um, so in this case, a workshop was enough to get going and to start. And of course, since it was a research project and I was there with them all the time, I guess that also, even though I didn't help them, still it is, it is they're kind of getting um, uh, support by just being there and uh, taking part in this uh, research project. Um, so what we do uh, is that uh, within the early childhood teacher education, we have um, digital technology and digital competence as themes. So right after Easter, uh, we'll have a project week. It should be physical, but now the university, because of COVID-19, will be closed at that time. So we'll do it digitally. So we'll have some digital um, uh, teaching of how to use technology and I'll show them yeah, by using camera and stuff. Uh, and then they will um, be given a task to create an animated movie. And because they were, a lot of them will stay at home and don't have the possibility to borrow the equipment that then they usually could, uh, I'll teach them how to use just a uh, phone and create digital stories just by using their phone and make it very easy, uh, but just to to learn how to do it. And then we'll have a session where we'll share a, each other's experiences in terms of how to use the technology. So, but it's, it's not easy. And, um, but what I've found in my research, what I think is very important is that it's not actually about the technology, it's more about the pedagogy. Just to start using it, uh, like you use books, like you use other uh, materials. And it's not about using it a whole lot, but just using it for small, smaller project, uh, take some photos, let the children take some photos, look at them. Uh, add some sound and then you actually have a digital story and it can be done just on the phones yes we really need to think new pedagogic strategies uh, here in brazil at here at unicamp we have a colleague Venceslau oliveira jr who is developing a research project in a daycare with children's one to three years old and they are producing cinema with children uh, so it's very interesting how we can create new strategies new approaches mm -hmm. and uh, we need to to go behind the box that's it <laughs> <laughs> it's it's nice to to find papers and the project that put us to think news in our practice. Thank and you. And what I, what I also wrote about in that specific article is the combination of the digital and the non-digital so that you actually see them as complementary resources. So you can draw a drawing on with pen and paper and then take a photo of it and then add some sound and you actually have a story. Or just give the camera to the children and 
let they take some pictures. So it, it doesn't have to be a big project and very complicated, just make it a bit easy, especially in the beginning. And that's, that's what I like most on our work, Marianne, the finding that technology itself does not improve pedagogical situation. It doesn't, like, we think our oh, technology will save the world, like, <laughs> we'll be better teachers if we use technology. But that's not it. No. You can use technology and still be very traditional. Mm. Or you can use technology and believe that children can do stuff, that children can participate, that children can, can create stories. And I would like to hear you more talking about why multimodal stories, digital stories can help us in early childhood. Uh, I didn't get your question. Why do we need to use more multimodal digital stories in early childhood? How it can help us to work with children? And if I can add something, I want to ask you, Mariani, uh, why do it now? <laughs> Because we have other situations now during the pandemic, other challenges for early childhood education. And it's interesting to think how and why to work with uh, uh, multimodal stories uh, before and during the pandemic? I know we, we've asked some teachers in Norway and um, because of the coronavirus pandemic, they, they use digital technology um, less now than they used to because they have too many other things to think of. So I think it is important that we also take into consideration uh, that we have to focus on the activities that are the most important at the moment, and that's probably not the digital technology. Um, um, just that focus. Uh, I was lucky to do my research before COVID-19. So I was lucky to be able to go into the kindergarten and to see what they were actually doing. Um, but I also know examples from other countries, not maybe so much in Norway, but places where they have used digital technology also to uh, research and get in contact with the families, maybe when, uh, uh, and that's also been done in Norway, when the kindergartens were closed, the teachers were kind of creating um, circle time online. Uh, to give the children something to um, to talk about and an event and happening uh, with singing uh, songs together and um, telling stories. Um, but back to the digital, what did you ask, Haisa? <laughs> I know you've been talking about multimodal digital stories and, and yeah. how the, the teachers They use it, uh, all the strategies they used. But um, from, from children's per perspective of view, of course, they participated more. But I want to listen to you a little bit more, like on, on making this point, like why we should use more digital stories with children. I know you, you've talked a lot, but just a little bit more from children's, from children's view, how, how it helped us to improve their participation? For, for children, children love stories and children love to tell stories. From their very, very young, they tell what they have been doing during the weekends and did yesterday and experiences and stuff. And in kindergarten, there is a long tradition of writing down what the children are telling, putting them on the posters, adding some pictures and creating multimodal stories, but not digital, but uh, stories that consist of pictures and words and on the wall. And then what the digital adds is that you also can record sound, you can record movement, uh, create movement. Um, the children can use uh, the camera and go out and film their own um, 
uh, environment and add actually tell tell people what they see and create a story like that or they can uh, create a fairy tale uh, inspired story like we did um, and create an animated movie or take photos and add sound and what was very important for the children was the sound that's why one of the articles is, uh, is actually called We Need Sound. Because very early in the process, they had created one of the scenes with the animated scenes and they were watching it and it was all silent. And the children said, we need sound, they don't talk. <laughs> so, and then they kept asking, when, when should we add sound? Well, we need sound. So they came back to that many, many times. And then they added the sound. And what they also asked about from actually from day one, when will we show this to the others? So to be able to share with our peers, that was very important for the children. And they kept asking those questions as well. Um, and somehow by creating a digital story, they actually spent nine days on this story. So it was the same group with the same teacher in the same room for several days. And they were doing something one day and then uh, coming back to the same event several days and kind of um, talking about what they had done yesterday, what they will do now, and then, yeah, different activities during the process. And then finally, an, uh, a final story that they could share. So you kind of, you have all these ideas for the children during the process and they kind of create it together during those days. So you kind of, um, you, you create a product that you can share and that you can uh, uh, save and the children can rewatch it afterwards. So usually when the children create stories orally, which is very important as well, they are not able to listen to it themselves afterwards. But with the digital, you can, the children can listen to it afterwards, what they were talk, uh, talked about. So it, it adds a new layer to it, I think, but we need both. Sure, sure. So thank you so much, Mary. It was lovely to hear you. Thank you. Thank you, Mariane. Thank you, Raisa. And all of you watching us, it's time to finish our talk today. But before to go, uh, if you enjoyed the discussion, please like and share this video with your team and colleagues. See you in the next video. And remember, always keep at home, be safe, and when you can, take the COVID vaccine. Bye-bye, and thank you again, Mariane.